Good evening, viewers, and you welcome to the program Stock and Shares. Interestingly, patterned uh, after a number of other markets, one of the things that our market has also started to experience is uh, a second round of flooding. And this flooding has to do with the announcement of first quarter results for 2021. Having just concluded at the end of March, the flooding has released to the full year of 2020. But that itself uh, will begin to give direction to the market as to what, how the month of April is likely to end and how the month of March may also be heading. But with just three trading days to the end of the month of April, one of the things that we can also confirm to you that the eight days straight climb session uh, basically came to an end at the end of trading today. Uh, so it ended at seven straight positive day trading days, uh, which itself is the best as far as 2021 is concerned. But on the note as to how the month of April will end, that is one of the things I will be sharing with you on the program this evening. And I will be extending that as to how the month of March may also turn out. And that is not the only thing that I will be sharing with you on the program this evening. Uh, because talking about uh, the program, uh, yes, we will not, we'll not be talking anything about first quarter, but we'll be sharing with you market development. We'll be sharing with you corporate results. And interestingly, the corporate results you know, will be a continuation of the just ended uh, national games uh, because the two candidates that will be on parade talking about corporate results will be also extending that competition uh, in terms of their results. That we'll also be sharing with you. We'll also be sharing with you uh, regulars like corporate uh, company of the week uh, but much more of note, uh, like I also mentioned, that we'll be talking about market development. But for our first time viewers, which is the pride that we also uh, carry around town as far as the program is concerned, uh, because of your input in making success of this, this program in the last 15 years, we'll be urging our first time viewers to use any of the two platforms that we'll be sharing with you on the program this evening, uh, be it by SMS, that that's, uh, information should come any moment from now. Uh, is either you use an SMS platform or you use an email platform. Uh, both of them will end in the same location, in the same location in the sense that that is what we basically aggregate uh, to be able to help us in managing what should be coming next as far as the program is concerned. So you can use the SMS and you can use the email. Uh, like I said, you're making huge contribution as to how the program is formed. And it's on that note that we'll be asking that, yes, you probably think that you've heard the summary. Uh, we may not sound too convincing for some persons or wondering, oh, what is it all about? But one thing that we're setting is that at the end of 60 minutes, which we hope that you'll be joining us in, uh, you'll be much more than convinced that there's so much to invest as far as Nigerian capital market is concerned. So it's on that note that we ask that you permit us to take the first break. Please stay tuned after the break. to have the best me and Toshi they have ever tested. How do I know? My new Dangote seasoning cube brings out the best flavor. The new Dangote seasoning is just perfect for my me and Kobiwa. The aroma and the flavor is simply amazing. Mesuya, why is Suya too sweet like this? Since the time I they use and put, I had they use and put Dangote seasoning, I they put them for my edge. Then it they make my suya correct, come it they on point. That is why I see people that they even come by this suya all the time. They come. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Mesuya, give me 200 naira. Do I want you to be done past 200 naira, pa? 
introducing the new Dangote seasoning to give every meal that rich distance, taste and flavor that your whole family will love. To the left, Whoa! and it's the way! The new Dangote seasoning cube is the real deal. Try it today. You're welcome back. Starting it on the note as to how the market did end for the week ended 23rd of April uh, 2021. First, we can confirm to you that the market uh, basically was in a good mood, rallying to a 1.27% appreciation. Uh, but much more is the fact that the market also traded over 42 billion naira worth uh, in a week that had only 1.6% billion shares traded and you'll be wondering how come uh, first let's confirm to you uh, that uh, 2007 2008 2010 2014 and 2018 uh, we are the only five years that had both value and volume above 2 billion uh, in terms of units and 20 billion in terms of value However, only 2007 uh, was the year in which all the three indicators uh, were in agreement. Uh, the volume was in excess of 2 billion. The value was in excess of 20 billion. Uh, to be specific, uh, the volume was 3.36 billion. The value was 35.81 billion naira. And we also had Sorry, I take that again. The volume was 3.31 billion. The value was 46.35 billion. And the index did go by 2.6% uh, in that year. What that also then means is that we've had four straight years, uh, 2017 to 2020, uh, being negative. Uh, and interestingly, uh, 2016, had it not been so, what we'll have had uh, will have been 2014 uh, to 2020 uh, been negative, which means seven straight years uh, will have been what will have come uh, on the table. But looking at the figure, like I mentioned, that 42 billion, uh, it happens to be the second, the third best really uh, between 2006 and 2021. Then looking at the next chart, uh, which is a more detailed position vis-a-vis -vis what we just described, uh, is the fact that the, all the indicators, uh, other than the bond, the sovereign, trans, sovereign bond segment, we are basically positive. And that also means that in terms of direction, uh, one of the things that you will find uh, it's a situation where uh, after four years, 2017 to 2020, uh, being negative in terms of all share index, like we told you, uh, 2021 has turned positive. But all sectors, uh, again, remaining positive. But if you look critically, what you will find is that the consumer subsector had had 2013 to 2020, eight straight years of being negative. Uh, which is in contrast to the Lotus, uh, which is in agreement rather with Lotus uh, sector that also had 2013 to 2020, eight straight years of being negative. But for the banking subsector, 
uh, that had done 2009 to 2014 as uh, six straight years of being positive, uh, basically tried to return to posi uh, positive in 2020, 2021 rather, after doing uh, two straight years, 2020 and 2019 uh, negative. While the oil and gas that also had 2009 to 2016, eight straight years of being negative uh, by 2021 is back positive. Uh, though at 2020, uh, coming between a three-year position in terms of being positive. But let's again look at why the chart, this chart is on. Uh, let's quickly, before we go to the next chart, let's quickly mention that in terms of market development, uh, probably we should start on the note as to how the market did end. Uh, the traded in terms of vol volume and value that we talked about uh, earlier uh, happens for happens to be the third best in 16 years uh, that is the third best in 16 years talking about the 42.14 uh, uh, that was traded uh, but in terms of index uh, this is the first positive uh, in five years uh, because if you look at what we showed you earlier you'll find that 2017 to 2020 uh, basically had a situation where uh, they were struggling uh, as far as the market is concerned. And interestingly as well, part of this was as a result of the 32 gainers uh, that happened on the last trading day of the week. And this itself happens to be the best in 10 weeks. Uh, though the figure that we have in 2021 uh, in terms of direction of the market happens to be the joint third uh, as far as the value being traded. Then looking at the next chart, which is a summary as to what the market has done in the last 12 years. Uh, first, you'll find that, again, given the size of transaction uh, in the week under review, uh, we had less than 100 companies not appreciating in share price. Uh, though lower, though worse than what was done in 2019, uh, but only in those two years did you find the value uh, going uh, below a hundred. But in all of this, uh, it must also be mentioned that the week under review also had a lot of activity uh, involving new listing. Uh, Fidelity Bank, for instance, listed 41.2 billion, uh, 10 years, 8.5% bond, uh, which is part of the 100 years, 100 million a hundred billion uh, bond issuance that the, the company is hoping to do between now uh, and the nearest future. Similarly, FBN Quest, uh, which is the merchant bank arm of uh, First Bank, or First FBN, which is a merchant bank arm of the FBN holding, also had an eight billion uh, out of the 50 billion uh, bond issuance that is, that is also proposing, uh, but the coupon rate is, is 6.25%. EMSO is not too certain whether EMSO will end up being listed on the market, but EMSO has made the first move of having its bond listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange with a 13.7 billion out of the 50 billion bond issuance that it's hoping to uh, do, uh, and it's at the rate of 10%. Uh, this is also happening in the week when the federal government euro bond for $500 million uh, at 3.375%, uh, a 10-year uh, bond, uh, which means it will mature in 2023, uh, was also listed. Plenty of activity you probably would see. I uh, will give you the other segment, uh, the other uh, development in the course of the program. So let's take another break. And when we come back uh, after the break, what we'll be sharing with you uh, will basically be the companies that help to push the market in the direction that we talked about earlier. Don't forget, the market did go up by 1.27% uh, in the week under review. Please stay tuned uh, as we go on a short break.
There is a reason Africa is called the new frontier. What was once potential is now an opportunity ready to be seized. Once revered for our resources, today's wealth lies in our people. People who build the cities that shape the future. People who know an idea in one place means business in another. A generation for whom technology means there are no borders, no boundaries. We are the new lions in a brave new world. Kings of the urban jungle. And there's a bank that puts the world in our pocket and the future in our hands. UBA, Africa's global bank. Every uncertainty that life presents on a daily basis, there is only one cover you can be sure of. The Sovereign Trust Insurance PLC cover. We have all it takes to give you the assurance that life can be perfect, even in the midst of uncertainty. Come under our cover today and put life's uncertainty behind you. Sovereign Trust Insurance PLC. We've got you covered. Welcome back. And if you just join us, the program is Stock and Shares. Let's start on the note as to what the NASD did in the week under review. Yes, it's a smaller market, uh, but one of the things that we also continually console ourselves in is that the young shall grow. And talking about the young, we can also tell you that just like the Nigerian Stock Exchange, the NASD also had uh, an opportunity of the, that market recording a 2.69% appreciation, uh, having gained 12.6 billion uh, uh, in the week and also trading uh, interestingly 1.6 billion shares 1.6 billion naira worth of shares but that wouldn't stop AfriBank from taking a dip uh, of 5 kobo and that also meant the AfriBank uh, went down by 3.84% in a week that also saw NGX group which is uh, under which the Nigerian Stock Exchange is coming, uh, going down by 2 naira for Kobo, and that also meant that it dipped by 9.26%. Uh, NIPCO, uh, the technical partner now of Double One or Formerly Mobile, uh, picked up a 50 Kobo gain, and that fetched it a 0.73% appreciation in the week. CSES went up by 62 Kobo, and he fetched it almost a 3.9% appreciation in terms of market capitalization. While Wamco uh, picked up a 9 naira 70 kobo gain and fetched it 7.5%, 7.46% uh, uh, in terms of uh, appreciation. But we can also tell you that from all indication, uh, the Nigerian Stock Exchange under the uh, NGX group uh, basically top both the volume and the value uh, chart uh, followed by CSCS, followed by WAMCO, and then you had the situation where uh, NIPCO and Niger Delta were basically swapping position uh, in terms of uh, volume and in terms of value. Similarly, we also had a situation uh, on the Nigerian Stock Exchange end uh, where we had the index, uh, like I mentioned, the index going up by 1.27% uh, having 39 companies appreciating in share price and that chart will come any moment from now. Uh, Stambik IBTC basically led the pack and it went up by 4 naira 
and that also meant that Stambik was picking up his third consecutive gain uh, and this again is the seventh gain uh, since 2006. Ironically, the company picked up the four naira on the last trading day of the week uh, when it led 32 other companies that appreciate, uh, appreciated in price on the last trading day of the week. The company itself was coming in from a drop of two naira, 30 cover that placed its second the previous week. GT Bank, sixth appearance, picked up two naira, five cover, uh, notwithstanding a 10 cover drop on the last trading day of the week. Uh, the previous week, the company was up by 25 cover when it finished fifth. But at the end of trading today, the company did drop by 15 cobo, uh, and that places that the worst loser uh, in a day that also saw the index uh, go down. And interestingly, it was ahead of University Press that dropped by 11 cobo to close at 1 naira 17 cobo. UBA that dropped by 10 cobo to close at 7 naira 40 cobo and Access Bank that dropped by 10 cobo to also close by 7 naira 45 cobo. For MTN, uh, it dropped by 2 naira, it went up by 2 naira, uh, reversing a 90 cobo drop that it posted the previous week. Uh, and interestingly, for the second consecutive years, we also have a situation where uh, MTN uh, is picking up uh, so second consecutive year, MTN is picking up price uh, as far as the market is concerned. Lafarge was fourth on the list with a one era 80 cobo gain. Uh, Lafarge itself picked up 40 cobo on the last trend of the week. Uh, the previous week, Lafarge was down by 50 cobo and finished ninth. Con Oil picked up a second appearance after a 2010 appearance. And interestingly, Con Oil uh, finished one era 70 cobo up ahead of one era 10 cobo gain by Nigerian breweries. And Nigerian breweries, again for the second consecutive year, is appearing on the chart. Uh, but this is the sixth time uh, in 15 years that Nigerian breweries is appearing on the top 10. But it must also be mentioned, ironically, for corn oil uh, that was able to pick up his second appearance. Uh, corn oil, uh, for the same period uh, in the last 15 years, corn oil has been down 10 times. Uh, so the appearance in 2021 and 2019 uh, is not in line uh, with the general trend of what corn oil would do for this period of the year. But for Dangote cement, Dangote sugar rather, uh, I picked up a one naira gain, uh, haven't picked up 90 cobo on the last trend day of the, of the week, as against the one naira 10 cobo that Nigerian breweries picked up on the last trend day of the week. But Nigerian breweries was coming in from a 90 cobo drop the previous week, finishing six, uh, but for Dangote sugar, it was coming from a five cobo drop uh, the previous week. PZ, fifth appearance with 95 cover gain, uh, just like UAC that is picking up the third appearance. But what PZ came to the table with, with a five, was a five cover gain on the last trend day of the week, while UAC came in with a 30 cover gain on the last trend day of the week. Ironically, Zenith Bank also did come in with a 30 cover gain on the last trend day of the week uh, to push the total gain to 80 cover and also picking up his seventh appearance. But at the end of trading today, we can also confirm to you that Zenith Bank did go down by 10 cobo uh, to close at 22 naira, 10 cobo. Why UAC was coming in from uh, a 70 cobo gain the previous week when it finished third. On the upside, one of the things that you will find uh, is the fact that uh, Adova at the end of trading today, picked up an 80 cobo gain to close at 15 naira 45 cobo, while Champion Beers added 15 cobo to share price to close at 22 to close at 2 naira uh, 16 cobo. Don't also forget that at the end of trading today, uh, there were 23 companies that appreciated in share price as against 25 on the first trading of the week, and on the downside, we have 16 companies at the end of trading today, uh, and the previous trading day we had 17. But in the week under review, uh, we can also confirm to you that there were 24 companies uh, that dropped in price. And of that number, nine was as a result of the drop on the last trading day of the week, uh, which also included companies that were marked exdiv uh, in the week. But to that, Total led the pack, uh, picking up the 10th appearance in 16 years 
uh, going down by six naira, ten kobo. But it must also be mentioned that Total was marked down by six naira, eight kobo in the week under review. Guinness picked up the seventh appearance on the downside, and interestingly, in the same period, we have had we have seen Guinness do six times on the upside in the last 15 years. But Guinness went down by three naira, fifteen kobo. Uh, so Guinness been up by two naira, fifteen kobo the previous week when he finished second. So in terms of Jesse, uh, the company will wear Jesse number two uh, for the second consecutive week. For Union Daikon, uh, picked up the second drop uh, after a 2010 drop, uh, and it dropped by one naira, five kobo, uh, which was all that he had to do. All of that he had to do on the last trading day of the week. Eco Corp uh, was down by 60 kobo, and interestingly, EcoCorp should be coming in any moment from now uh, for a court ordered EGM. But for Portland Paints, uh, waiting to be fully consumed uh, by CAPL, it dropped by 53 Kobo in the week under review, 13 Kobo worse than NASCON's performance in the week uh, because part NASCON dropped by 40 Kobo uh, to pick this third drop in 15 years. It must also be mentioned that NASCON was marked for dividends of 40 kobo in the week under review. Similarly, we had Sterling Bank being marked for the dividend of 5 kobo and Absad Mansad being marked for 5.5 kobo in terms of dividend. But for Cadbury, uh, Cadbury dropped 30 kobo uh, and this is the fifth drop uh, in 15 years. Uh, but it must also be mentioned that Cadbury uh, the previous week was up by 10 kobo. Uh, same for African Prudential. Uh, African Prudential finishing seventh and Cadbury finishing eighth. But African Prudential in the week under review uh, dropped by 20 Kobo. Uh, three uh, worse than Fidelity. But it must also be mentioned that Fidelity's position is largely as a result of the 22 Kobo dividend uh, that was smacked down in the week under review. For FBN holding, it dropped 15 Kobo, uh, notwithstanding a 5 Kobo gain on the last trading day of the week. Uh, the company itself was also marked down for 45 Kobo dividend uh, that they hope to pay today. But let's share with you before we look at the other position uh, that in terms of volume and value traded, uh, the market also had very interesting showing uh, because in terms of volume, uh, we had Fidelity Bank uh, doing a 2268 million. Uh, and interestingly, the previous week, Fidelity also did a 191 million transaction. And it led five other banks uh, in the top 12. Uh, while one insurance company, uh, interestingly, Linkage, uh, was also on the chart in the week under review. And flipping the charts and looking at big value, uh, what you will find, we still have a challenge to in showing that, uh, talking about big tickets, like I mentioned, in terms of big ticket, Fidelity Bank basically dominated and MTN basically came in between. Uh, otherwise, what will have happened will have been top five being all banks. But that didn't stop the six banks uh, from picking a position in the week. And looking at the next chart that we'll be sharing with you, talking about big value. Uh, in terms of big value, you will find MTN doing 29.8 billion uh, in the week on that review. Uh, interestingly, that is almost a 30 billion transaction uh, in a week that had 42 billion uh, traded. But while we wait for that chart to come, uh, what you also will notice, interestingly, in the week, is the situation where six of the companies in the top 12 uh, happens to be We seem to have a challenge in showing that to you, uh, talking about the big value. Uh, but notwithstanding, uh, what you will find is that MTN, like I said, doing almost 30 billion uh, 
and leaving uh, GT Bank to struggle with less than four billion. But much more of note is that six banks uh, basically featured in the top 12. Uh, and that also had a situation where in total uh, 27 companies traded over 25 million naira worth of shares, while 14 companies uh, did over 100 million uh, in the week under review. And like I mentioned, this itself is the third as far as the market is concerned uh, in terms of transaction. Uh, but why the chart is on? Uh, let's quickly just mention in terms of market development that interestingly in 2020 uh, and this will answer the question of some persons who wanted to know what exactly was it that Julius Beja paid. Uh, Julius Beja had wanted to pay a dividend of 2 naira 75 kobo with a one for one bonus but this itself was adjusted downwards to 2 naira uh, but the one for one bonus did. Uh, and then in 2019 we had a situation where SACO was listed and was listed at 4 naira 65 kobo. Why CAPL uh, behaved just like uh, Julius Beja had done? Uh, CAPL initially had wanted to pay a dividend of uh, 25 kobo, uh, and this was moved to, sorry, 2 naira 50 kobo, and this was moved to 2 naira 90 kobo. Why in 20 09. Interestingly, 10 years earlier, uh, we had a situation where EcoBank Nigeria was listed and it was listed at 6 naira 90 kobo. Uh, in the same year, uh, EcoBank uh, ETI uh, was to follow. I, I take that again. EcoBank Nigeria was listed in 206 at 6 naira 90 kobo, uh, but three years later, ETI basically came on the, on the scene and then swallowed. EcoBank. So for persons who are also wondering, uh, you certainly will not have EcoBank certificates uh, being relevant anymore because all of that has been, has been subsumed uh, in ETI uh, in terms of transaction. So on this note, we then take another break. Uh, and when we come back after the break, what we basically will be looking at is how the month of April is likely to end. But much more importantly, uh, what is the outlook in terms of the month of May? Please stay tuned. I'm the Executive Director of Technical ICO Insurance PLC. ICO has been in existence for 55 years and we have track record. In this market, we are known by a lot of multinationals. In terms of claim settlements, in the industry, they know us for that. We settle claims within 24 hours, within 48 hours, because we have the financial muscle and we have the technical skill capability to do it. In terms of branch network, we have presence in so many states. We also give them best of services. So that's what we, we stand for as I We are always there and there's a claim from our clients. We've been supporting various businesses for a long time and we'll continue to do that.
Over three decades, people world over have improved their health and well-being by its rich ingredients. A unique blend of essential amino acids, multivitamins and minerals specially formulated to combat stress and fatigue. The golden promise of Astamine is being enjoyed by more and more people who have found the deepest secret of living life at its peak. Astamine, get healthier. Welcome back. And if you just join us, the program is Stock and Shares. One thing that is certain is that should the market maintain this momentum uh, in the last eight trading days, the chances are high uh, that the month of April will close positive. But let's look at how the month of May uh, is already showing itself. Uh, because looking at the month of May, one of the things that you'll find is that 2019 2020 basically close positive and that itself is coming after a, a negative uh, finish in 2018 and before then the uh, negative was in 2015 so looking at a 10-year position uh, you'll find that the market is only been down in 27 in 2015 and 2018 and then if you then look further uh, it's also been down four times uh, uh, interestingly, between 2001 and 2010, uh, and in 2011 uh, 2000 and to 2014, uh, we had a situation where the market had four straight years of being positive. So 2009, however, remains the best as far as the market has done, and that was done in the month of May, and the market rallied to a 38.2 percent appreciation. Uh, so that is a service record uh, that the market will be hoping. But one of the things that will also help the month of May uh, in terms of direction will be the quality of earnings uh, that the companies will be posting, hopefully in the first quarter of 2021. But so far, uh, it's been a mixed bag, uh, but we'll keep you posted uh, in subsequent edition as to what the month of May, how the month of May may also progress but talking about the next chart which happens to be the how june uh, sorry how april is ready looking uh, like i mentioned uh, if the last eight trading days is anything to go by uh, the month of april is likely to finish positive but the possibility of running red is also not unlikely uh, because the market is only standing on a 0.69 percent positive uh, currently but what is will be uncertain as well is that which companies will basically be leaving the pack uh, because looking at the chart one of the things that you'll find uh champs doing a 150 in 2019 happens to be the best performing uh company as far as the month of april is concerned uh, so we are looking forward to one in which uh, will there be another surprise uh, because before Champs really came on board in 2010, we had UTC uh, running a 93.1% appreciation. But on the downside, uh, which has been much more moderated uh, in terms of the swing, uh, what you will find in this instance uh, is basically looking at Costin. Uh, Costin going down by 56 point. 56 percent uh, basically happens to be the worst performing and that itself was achieved in 2013 uh, so that is basically the story of what the month how the month of april may end but what is also uh what must also be pointed out is interestingly uh costain has been delisted uh, in 2013 uh, i was down by 56 
and by 2015, it turned out to be the best performance in the month uh, with almost a 43% appreciation. So you could find a situation where one month the company is doing well, in another month uh, it's probably going south uh, because that is the nature of the market. And it's also on that note that we then take another break. When we return after the break, we'll be sharing with you uh, the corporate results. Please stay tuned. to the new realities for operating your business and engaging with your customers, let us help you transform your business into a digital powerhouse capable of adapting and taking advantage of today's opportunities. With our best-in-class array of digital solutions, you can conduct your business, receive payments from your customers, and perform transactions quickly, safely, and conveniently, because we've got you covered with the right people, technology, and service offerings. Contact us today and let us take your business to its zenith. Zenith Bank, in your best interest. Cover mobility, education, family, travel, home, business, lifestyle, custodian, exceeding expectations. welcome back and if you just join us the program is stock and shares probably before we share with you the two companies on parade one of the things that we probably will have mentioned that the unity bank that went down in 2015 was likely as a result of the effect of post consolidation uh, the company for every five shares that you had the company reduced it for every 10 shares that you had the company reduced it to one and moved the price from 50 kobo to five naira but thereafter it was on the decline. Uh, but for the two companies on parade, uh, you are not likely to see that size of drop uh, in terms of their prices. Uh, because looking at, looking at the charts, uh, what you will find uh, first is Okomo Oil. Uh, Okomo top line moved from almost 19 billion uh, in 12 months ended December 2019. Uh, to finishing 23.4 billion uh, by 2020 and the profit also went in the same direction from almost a 5.1 billion uh, profit after tax Okomo closed the year at 7.8 billion and that explains why the earnings uh, moved from almost 530 kobo uh, to 816 kobo uh, in 2020 and as against a dividend of four naira in two, that was paid in 2020 for 2019, uh, the dividend that will be paid in 2021 for the 2020 accounting year uh, will be seven naira. No bonus for both years, but in terms of waiting period, uh, basically flat uh, because in 2019, uh, based on price, uh, the closing price. Uh, the waiting period was 10 and a half years and that has closed at 11 years uh, for the 16,150 shareholders 
uh, of the company. But let's quickly mention that, interestingly for the company, in 2019, the dividend was 3 Naira, just like it was in 2018. Uh, this itself was coming in from a 1 Naira 50 Kobo dividend in 2017, 10 Kobo in 2016, and in 2015, the dividend was 25 Kobo, uh, but in 2014, uh, the dividend was 1 Naira. And that itself is the starting point in terms of pricing. Uh, from a 25 Naira, 35 Kobo sh share price close at 31st of December 2014, uh, the share price rallied to a 30 Naira, 30 Kobo close in 2015, and then had three straight years, another three straight years of climb. Uh, in total making it four because by 2016 it did close at 40 naira 17 kobo moving to 67 naira 69 kobo by 2017 and 76 naira 20 kobo by 2018 by 2019 it dropped to 55 naira 60 kobo and then climbing to 91 naira by 2020 and at the end of trading today having gained five naira it closed at 95 naira so you talk of another three straight years of a climb. But Okomo itself was coming in from a share price of 14 Naira 50 Kobo in 2004. Uh, and interestingly, even in that year, he did achieve a low of 10 Naira 80 Kobo. Uh, closing 17 Naira 80 Kobo by 205. Uh, then climbing further to 34 Naira 5 Kobo by 206. 36 naira 10 kobo by 207 and then dropping to 32 naira 79 kobo by 208 and then 22 naira 75 kobo by 209 and then further down to 15 naira 20 kobo by 2010. So that is basically the story uh, for Komo oil. But for the competitor also based in Edo, uh, hence the uh, hence the comparison really uh, because both of them are also into agri. Uh, interestingly, those are the two major uh, agri base in the real sense of it, other than the likes of Dangote sugar uh, listed on our market. But for Presco, uh, Presco 2019 uh, top line was almost 20 billion and that moved to almost 24 billion uh, by 2020. Profit after tax moved from 3.8 billion to 5.3 billion. And for the earnings, from 384 Kobo uh, to 526 Kobo. Uh, however, in both years, uh, the dividend uh, remained too naira. Uh, this itself has been, been the position since 2018 when he also paid. Two naira. So three straight years, uh, Presco has paid a dividend of twenty-two naira, uh, because in 2017 it was 150, which is health was coming in from it one naira in 2015 and 2016. But in 2014, the dividend was ten kobo, and that itself will be the starting point in terms of pricing, because in 2014 the share price did close at twenty-four naira fifty kobo. However, it climbed to 33 Naira by 2015, climbing further in 2016 to 40 Naira 10 Kobo, and then 68 Naira 50 Kobo by 2017. By 2018, it did drop to 64 Naira, dropping further to 47 Naira 50 Kobo by 2019, uh, and then took off by 2020 to 70 Naira 95 Kobo and 72 naira uh, in 2020. Don't also forget that the company has been on the queue, uh, hoping to raise additional capital. <coughs> but investors in Presco must also remember that Presco took off from a 9 naira 71 kobo in 2014. And interestingly, in that year, uh, the low was 7 naira 73 kobo, then climbing to 11 naira 80 kobo before dropping to 10 naira by 206. By 207, it was 14 Naira, 55 Kobo, then dropping to 10 Naira, 11 Kobo by 208. But it must be mentioned that in 208, he achieved a high of 31 Naira, 
uh, compared to a high of 40 naira 11 kobo that uh, Okomo did. But by 209, it was 5 naira 60 kobo, 6 naira 85 kobo by 210, 8 naira 65 kobo by 2011, 17 naira by 2012, and by 2013, he rallied to a 35 naira 50 kobo climb uh, before crashing to 24 naira 50 kobo uh, in 2014. So that again is the story uh, of the two companies on parade talking about corporate results. It's also on that note that we then take another break. And when we come back after the break, I will be sharing with you the company of the week. Please stay tuned. Today's fast paced, high stakes, make or break world. You need every edge you can get to help your business succeed. That is why we've designed the new and improved Sterling Pro. We've made it even more flexible to adapt to your enterprise, no matter the size. And we've also upgraded the security to make your business transactions more secure. And now more than ever, you can now get even more done with one premium solution. Get the extra edge to succeed in today's competitive world with a solution that's built for your business. Visit sterling.ng slash pro and let's get your business ahead. There is a reason Africa is called the new frontier. What was once potential is now an opportunity ready to be seized. Once revered for our resources, today's wealth lies in our people. People who build the cities that shape the future. People who know an idea in one place means business in another. A generation for whom technology means there are no borders, no boundaries. We are the new lions in a brave new world. Kings of the urban jungle. And there's a bank that puts the world in our pocket and the future in our hands. UBA, Africa's global bank. You're welcome back. And if you just join us, the program is Talk and Shades. For the company of the week, uh, probably we gave out some expo in the course of the program. Uh, but the, the reason for the company of the, or for the company being named the company of the week was explained partially in the course of the program. And the company of the week happens to be MTN Nigeria PLC. And if you're wondering why, uh, we told you that we had a situation where in the week, uh, the market recorded 42.14 billion Naira worth of transaction. Uh, and interestingly, this is turning out to be the third best uh, in 91 weeks. But the fact that MTN in the week uh, accounted for 29.84 billion of that size meant that MTN controlled almost 71% of the total value traded in the market. 
and that itself happens to be the best in 2021. And so that is basically what has end MTN, uh, the company of the week. And it's also on that note that we want to especially thank you for being part of this program. But again, for our first time viewers, uh, the fact that we've thanked you and we wish you uh, best of luck in the rest of the week does not mean that we don't have a bonus to offer you. And the bonus is that we still have a few information that we also set in uh, that will help your understanding of the market. So take away the bonus and we'll see you next week. God bless you and good night. <laughs> Sure thing, sweetie. Get your shoes and we go. Promise? You have my word. Daddy! You know I wouldn't leave without you, my princess. There's nothing more important than a promise. We are fidelity. We keep our word.